We know that a spring mass system with the net force that equals to negative kx is a simple harmonic oscillator. A simple pendulum, a pendulum that has all its mass concentrated at its end, is also a simple harmonic oscillator. To prove this, we have to be able to write its net restoring force so that it matches the negative kx format. Suppose at one moment during the oscillation, the mass m is at this position, an angle theta to the vertical and a distance x to the equilibrium position. If we draw the forces acting on the mass, we would have tension t and the weight mg. The restoring force along the x direction is tangent to the circle, so the tension does not contribute to it because tension is perpendicular to the tangent direction. The restoring force comes from mg's component that is tangent to the circle. If this angle is theta, then this angle here is also theta. So mg's component that is tangent to the circle is the sine component, mg sine theta. So the restoring force along the tangent direction is the mg sine theta. If angle theta is very small, usually smaller than 10 degrees is acceptable. Or in radians, theta is much less than 1. This fan shape would be close to a right triangle. So sine theta, the opposite side over hypotenuse, is almost x over l. So this will be mg times x over l. Because this is a restoring force, so we can put the negative sign over here. If we want to match this restoring force to the negative kx format, that means our k equivalent is mg over l. This means omega, which is the square root of k equivalent over m, would be the mg over l divided by m. The mass cancels. Omega is square root of g over l. So a simple pendulum in small amplitude oscillation is a simple harmonic oscillator and its omega is the square root of g over l. Each of these simple harmonic oscillators has its rotational counterpart. The rotational counterpart for the spring mass system is a torsional pendulum. When the wire is twisted, it provides a restoring torque of negative kappa theta, where kappa is called the torsion constant of the wire. If we have to write a differential equation that can be used to solve for theta as a function of time, we would start with the net torque equals to ne negative kappa theta equals to I alpha. Then we can replace the alpha with the second derivative of uh, theta. And there we have the differential equation. The omega of the torsion pendulum is the square root of, instead of k, we have kappa. Instead of m, we have the rotational inertia i. The rotational counterpart for a simple pendulum is a physical pendulum. A physical pendulum does not have all its mass concentrated at its end. To prove that a physical pendulum is also a simple harmonic oscillator, we have to be able to write its net restoring torque so that it matches the negative kappa theta format. Suppose at one moment during the oscillation, the center of mass of the pendulum is at this position, an angle theta to the vertical. If the distance between the axis and the center of mass is d, find the restoring torque acting on the pendulum. The torque is produced by mg, so the torque is the force mg times the lever arm. The lever arm is the distance between the line of force and the axis, so it is this distance right over here. This angle is theta, so this angle here is theta too. So the lever arm is opposite to the angle, therefore the lever arm is the d sine theta. For small angles, theta much less than 1. Sine theta in radians, it is about the same as theta. So 
This is about the same as mgd times theta, and this is a restoring torque. So we can put a negative sign over here. This means mgd is the equivalent kappa for the physical pendulum. That means omega, which is supposed to be the square root of equivalent kappa divided by i, is the square root of mgd over i. So the omega for a physical pendulum is the square root of mgd over i. And in order for a physical pendulum to oscillate, the axis cannot go through the center of mass. Therefore, the i is never the ICM, which means if the ICM is the rotational inertia that is given, then we have to use parallel axis theorem to shift the axis to the actual axis. So I would be ICM plus MH squared, where the H and the D both are the distance between the axis and the center of mass. So this D and this H, they are the same thing.